Steve Borkis here with S&J Associates, and I'm here in Stockton, California today. I'm here with Kimberly Wormsley. Kimberly, Hi. welcome to the show. Thank you very much. How are you doing today? Good, good, good. Good. I understand you're a social worker. Yes. And I also understand that you went a couple of days ago to a detention center regarding the immigration situation that's taking place over the weekend. Tell us, Kimberly, since you were there, what did you see? So yesterday was um, probably one of the most difficult days um, of my whole career as a social worker. Mm -hmm. So um, I was able to go with a group of people um, from SEIU, Faith in the Valley, ACLU, um, a collateral group of people to take action against the detention centers that are going on um, throughout this nation. So Yuba City has um, is the most closest detention camps, with, you know, by Stockton. Okay. And so we went there to take a stance on what's going on with our kids. So um, we got there and we arrived, and we were met by a group uh, of people who have been working at the prison with the kids. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't say prison, I'm going to say detainment camp, mm -hmm. even though it seems like a prison. Um, and so they gave us a rundown of the situation. So the situation is very simple. Um, this detention camp in Yuba City houses anywhere between 130 children ranging from the ages of eight years old um, and up. They do have adults there. Um, it's not only people from Mexico. I want to make sure that the, the narrative is very defined. Um, these are people who have been picked up by ICE and or Border Patrol and they're transported there um, and they're detained. Um, the conditions there are very heinous, um, um, inhumane, unkind. Um, when I got off the bus, I just felt like a discernment. Um, it felt so cold. Um, you know, just hearing the stories and being, standing right in front of the center of where you're hearing kids are being held in cages, kids are being given cold food, kids don't have access to their parents. It just felt, I just felt a certain way as a mother. Mm -hmm. Um, I can't imagine what's going on. Um, some of the volunteers indicated that the children who are there are the young adolescents. Some of their parents are housed at different facilities throughout the state. There's one in San Diego, there's several in Texas, and there's a few in Arizona. So their parents are transported from on a Greyhound bus or a bus to visit their children and vice versa. So from, from Arizona, their bus to Yuba City, California, just to visit their children. It could be Arizona, it could be Texas, it could be San Diego, but at the end of the day, in regardless of where the, the, the other parents are being detained, mm -hmm. they're not together. And so these combinations of detention camps are basically busing parents mm -hmm. back and forth throughout the state to visit mm -hmm. their children. Now, when you say visit, are they visit, do they actually go into the cages with the children, or are they, the cage is still separating the child between the parent and the child? So, so, um, so what I mean by that is there there's a visiting site, and so the parents visit with the children, probably just the same way we're visiting. Okay. And sometimes there are other nonprofit agencies that come in and kind of like facilitate the visit or they're interacting in that visit to make sure that it's, you know, personable and not unethical. Okay. But the reports that the kids are reporting to their parents about the condition that they're living in okay. while at the detainment center. What are they saying, the children? So there was one um, lady in particular who spoke out yesterday and she has family members who were at that detention camp that we were protesting yesterday and okay. she said, but it, it was a word in Spanish and she translated, and she said that 
a young boy, which was later identified as her cousin, said, why do they have us here in dog cages? We are not animals. And so we had people coming up to speak about what is going on in those detention camps. And that is that was a combination of family and it was a combination of volunteers, um, including pastor and cler uh, clergy who are inside the camps who are trying to help with either national uh, naturalization paperwork okay. or asylum paperwork. Okay. So these were testimonies that were being said yesterday basically at this protest. Wow. Yeah. And how many people were at this protest? At least maybe three or four thousand. It was huge. Um, and so these actions, this political action that we took yesterday was happening throughout the United States. Um, I know that there were some that happened in Manteca. I heard that there were a few that happened in um, Tracy. I'm not sure if there were one that happened in Stockton, but as a correlation of groups, we actually got on the bus. We had about three or four buses that traveled there throughout the northern um, region okay. that met up at this site in Yuba. Mm -hmm. And this is the closest uh, detention camp within the northern uh, valley. Mm -hmm. Yes. In your opinion, in your professional opinion, what do you think is going on? What the hell is really going on? What do you, what's, what do you, what do you say to that? I say that I feel like there is inhumane injustice that is going on. Um, I'm going to talk on a clinical element first okay. and foremost. The emotional abuse that is happening where kids are being detained mm -hmm. in cages is going to alter and hinder their whole emotional development. Um, an eight-year-old and a nine-year-old should be playing with Tonka trucks and playing baseball. Right. These kids are being housed in a facility against their will. And innocent. Innocent. Mm -hmm. Without an expectation of when they will be released to their parents. And their whole psychological makeup is being redeveloped and not in a healthy way. Children need to be nurtured. Children do not need to be put in cages and are detainment centers for nothing because at this point they've committed no crime. And even if they've committed a crime, even if they committed a crime, as a social worker who's worked in this field for over 10 years, yeah. it is illegal to treat anyone in that magnitude. These kids don't even have real blankets. They're using blankets that we would give people in a, in a storm or a, you know, a tsunami. Uh, they don't even have a cotton blanket or a pillow. So that is totally altering their emotional intelligence and their physical development. As a mother, as a mother, I can't even imagine how my children would feel in that predicament and situation and how distressful they may be, how traumatized they may be as a child and, and even as a parent, you know, and, I, and I, I really, my heart really goes out to them. And I know, you know, I, I read what people say on Facebook. I know that I read a couple comments, well, their parents shouldn't have put them in this position and this and that and this and that. But at the end of the day, we should never mistreat children, period, exactly. period. And so I'm very shocked about what I've heard, what was going on through volunteers, through clergy, and through family. It's repulsive. All I can say at this point in time, thank you so much for coming. Thank, thank you very much for doing this. Thank you. It hurts. But it's necessary. Absolutely. And I just want the, the American people to know. This. So thank you. Thank you for, for going on better day. You can stand. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs>
This is Stephen Borges with S&J Associates, and thanks for watching.